Good Friday morning, people. You know what day it is. You know what time it is. We got to take a look at these pass rushers, see what they're doing, see if they're doing their job. Last couple weeks, they really have not, but uh, maybe this week it'll be different. Spoiler alert, it is different. A little bit better. Respectable. Commendable. So, we're actually going to have something to talk about this week with the pass rush. So, let's jump right in. Pass rush Friday. We are starting on a little bit of a down note because our defensive line, nothing. No pass rush from the defensive line. But that makes sense, right? That That's just common sense. We were in two-man fronts all game long. When you're in two-man fronts, your two down defensive linemen, they're going to get double teamed. They're going to get pushed out of the play. It's much easier to take care of them, right? So to me, that just kind of makes sense. It was almost like planned. You're going to have your defensive linemen eat up blockers and not be the ones who actually get to the quarterback so you can have other players, like your edge rushers namely, getting to the quarterback. Did that strategy work? In this arena, I can say yes. Daryl Taylor had one of his best games of the year and definitely his best game in like a month and a half. He had two pressures. One of those pressures helped cause the interception to Tariq Woolen. The other one resulted in a sack that basically ended the game with about 30 seconds left. At that point, it became unlikely. It went from unlikely to virtually impossible for the Rams to win the game. So Daryl Taylor in 20 snaps had actually a significant impact on this game. You can say he was one of our most impactful defenders, actually, just off those two plays. So that was a step in the right direction. We got something positive out of Daryl Taylor. Uh, Uchenna Nwosu, we got three pressures out of, so he had a great game, one of his best games of the year, including two sacks. He had that one nice play where he chased Wolford down from behind when it looked like Wolford was going to run for a first down, and Nwosu just said, no, it's not happening. Caught him, brought him back, and we're getting the ball back on offense. So huge game for Nwosu. I don't know if it's his best game as a Seahawk, but I think it's actually pretty far up there. And... Unlike most people that we talk about in this space, he's somebody who's actually on pace to not only surpass, not only meet, but surpass my expectations for him this year. So, shout out to him. Um, nothing from Mafe. Bruce Irvin, however, even though I don't think he played his best game from snap to snap, did add two pressures. So, he's also a guy who is actually exceeding expectations. Not that the expectations were massive, but he's doing his thing, I guess. All right, so moving past the edge rushers here, you have the linebackers, Jordan Brooks. He finally brought a quarterback down. He brought the quarterback down in the backfield for a sack, first time this year. So that's one pressure, his fifth of the year, and finally brought the quarterback down. And I've said it before, I'll say it again. Him blitzing the quarterback is something that I think he could be pretty good at. I'd like to see more of it. I was happy to see it a little bit in this game. Happy to see it pay off in such a big way because that was a third down sack. And I hope I see more of it because even though his coverage numbers are better this year, he's still not a very good coverage player. So anything you can do to get him out of coverage is probably good. <coughs> Nothing for Barton. And of course, Belor doesn't play on defense this much th that much this year. So nothing there. We did see another pressure added from the cornerback spot. Uh, Kobe Bryant had a QB pressure in this game. So, as you can see, he's been blitzed a little bit from that nickel corner spot this year, and he's had a little bit of success doing it. Um, he's got uh, three QB pressures on the year. This was his first one in a couple months, but that might not be a bad well to go back to, the uh, nickel corner blitz. So, as we move through these last five games, trying to find some solutions on defense here, maybe using Kobe Bryant as a blitzer, would be good for the same reason that using Jordan Brooks as a blitzer might be good. Neither guy is doing stellar in coverage. I think Kobe's doing okay, but he's giving up quite a bit. He's had some games where he's given up close to 100 yards. So if you want to maybe take him out of that a little bit by blitzing him, that could be something that really works. So I'd like to see a little bit more of that as well. And that's it. Nothing from the safeties, nothing from Ryan Neal. So add it all up, you get to nine. Nine... When you when also you have to remember 
Of those nine pressures, we had four sacks. Four sacks in a game is great. Four sacks in a game works. And the sacks that you got mattered too. You had one on the final drive that basically ended the game. You had one on third down from Jordan Brooks. You had the two from Nwosu that I believe stalled drives as well. So the sacks you got were impactful. And nine pressures is pretty good. It's definitely better than what we've been getting the last few games. It's not as good as what we were doing that one month when we became a dominant defense. It's nowhere near what we did against the Broncos, but it's workable. And obviously the overall pressure numbers this year are are not going to come anywhere near the hopes that I had before the season started. But at the very least, we're doing things better now than we were last week or the week before. That's something. Has to be said. So uh, let's take a few minutes here. Now that we're 12 games in, let's take a look at how these guys are doing overall. So the main issue that I'm seeing is that we're just... we. You look at these numbers and you immediately go, yeah, this is why we need, um, this is why we need Jalen Carter. We're just not getting enough pressure out of the guys who are actually down on the defensive line. Like, the only guy who is meeting expectations so far this year who I had real expectations for was is Jefferson. And Jefferson, despite doing a decent job getting pressure, is not really a good player. PFF thinks he's one of the worst uh, full-time players in the league right now. And his snaps have been cut significantly the last couple games. He's playing part-time, is actually being a little generous to him. And he doesn't have a QB pressure in a month. But Shelby Harris was a guy who I thought was going to be good for at least a pressure a game. He's had one pressure every two games on average. Um, Puna Ford, I was hoping he could make the transition to uh, 3-4 a little bit better, but he'll be lucky to get double-digit pressures. Al Woods is meeting expectations, and so is Brian Monet, but those expectations were really low because those guys are just run-stuffers. So you look at that and you go, that's why you need um, Jalen Carter. But you also look at this edge rusher stuff and you can see, like, that's also why you need um, Will Anderson. So I go back and forth on this one, right? Because Nwosu, Nwosu's probably going to live up to the expectations and maybe even surpass them a little bit. By the end of the year, five more games, he should be close to, I'd say, 28 pressures. Unless he completely falls off or blows up. But if he keeps up this pace, he's going to be somewhere around there. That's plenty good. He's going to have double-digit sacks. Daryl Taylor, I don't know where we go with Taylor from here, but obviously I had big expectations for him this year. I thought he was going to be good for about two pressures a game, but instead he's done a disappearing act and he actually had a full month of football with zero QB pressures. So I don't know where we go from here with him, but I obviously I like Mafe. I like Mafe, but there weren't huge expectations for him this year. And while I do think he's going to become a really good player in this league, I think he's going to become a great all-around player, not necessarily a dominant pass rusher, more like a Cliff Averill than a Khalil Mack. So I'm still trying to figure out exactly what we need to make this pass rush go next year, because this is where most of it should come from, the defensive line and the edge rushers. We can talk about Brooks blitzing. But that's a small part of the picture, even if he does blitz more. We can talk about cornerback blitzes. That's still a small part of the picture. The real thing here is this defensive line and edge rusher. I'm still going back and forth on it, man. It's not an easy decision. But both those areas, in my mind, need a lot of help. We have not even gotten halfway to my projection for total pressures on the D-line or from the edge rushers. All right. See you guys later. Go Hawks.